Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Karima, I am Powered by Power, and this episode, whew, Lord Jesus, I said a prayer, like a real good prayer before this because I'm gonna be talking about college. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. You got this, Karima. You got this. I got to pep talk myself because... Okay. Before we jump into this episode, thank you guys for clicking on this video. If you are not subscribed, please go ahead and hit that button down below. It's red. It says subscribe. It's free. It's free. Just do it. <laughs> um... Click that button down below, hit that bell so you can get notified every time that I post a new video. Please excuse my dog because he's rude and I have him locked up right now. So he's kind of like, don't be in here screaming while I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> but go ahead and follow me on this journey. Um, this channel is all about my faith walk and how I'm trusting God to be the woman he needs me to be so that I can really like shout from the mountaintops how dope he is. And so... I'm learning what that looks like, you know, every day is different, every day is better, every day is greater, and I'm walking closer and closer to who he needs me to be, walking in purpose, all that good stuff is here on this channel, so subscribe so you don't miss any of it, let's do this together, okay? Um, this is a series that I'm calling Why I'm Still Single, yeah, me, me, I'm still single. <laughs> God must have a plan because yes, yes, I know it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe for me. Now, <laughs> can I be me on my channel? Because this is me. This is me. I don't be understanding why I'm still single. Why? Why? <laughs> but listen, I trust God. So it is what it is. It is what it is. Um. But what you have missed so far, episode one was all about my family. Oh, my cheeks hurt. I was smiling too hard just now. All about my family. <laughs> my family and my parents and like how they shaped me into the woman that I am and like how I showed up in the world because of their influence. Episode two was about elementary school and middle school and how insecurity was birthed and was real back then and kind of was like, Yikes, right? I, I shared some pictures of, of how I looked in elementary school and middle school, some throwbacks. Whew. Anyway, go watch that episode if you want to see it. I'm not going to show them again. <laughs> um, episode three was about high school, and I talked about the first love of my life and how amazing he was. Like, it is what it is. He was amazing, and I played myself. So if you want to hear that story, go watch episode three. Today's episode is episode four, where I talk about my college life. Now, my family be watching this. He, they be watching my, um, my stuff here, my content. And so, listen, I'm sorry, okay? Some of y'all may already know the deal, but I might be saying some stuff on here that you ain't never know. So... God, but God, okay? Just know, I love Jesus, so don't judge me because he forgave me already, okay? I'm just saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so that's what this episode is gonna be. Then tomorrow's episode is going to be about my teaching career. And like I went straight from undergrad to the classroom. Like granted, I went, I had a, a whole master's program that told me how to be a teacher, but my love life during that whole transitional phase of trying to be an adult and working and having a career. Oh, sorry, New York, that's New York for you. Um, yeah, that was, that was interesting. So that's tomorrow's episode, stay tuned for that. After that, episode six is gonna be about adulting and my ups and downs and some more downs of adulting and dating and being and living on my own. like like by myself no cody no nobody like all those kind of you know mistakes yeah so i'm gonna be talking about that episode six and then episode seven is the finale of this series 
is going to be where I am currently, how I feel about being single, where I plan on like going, what God has for me, all those kind of things is going to be in episode 7. So again, hit that button. Hit that button, okay? Thank you for subscribing and following me on this journey. Let's jump into this video, okay? So, I guess I guess we gotta get started and talk about college. So I went to you, Albany. Shout out to you, A class of 2014. What's going on tonight? It's usually not sirens like that over here. Sounds like um fire trucks though it doesn't sound like sirens I hope everybody's okay Okay, I think I think I can start now. <laughs> so college. All right. Here we go. I guess. Um, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna talk about it. So college was I'll say half and half. Like freshman and sophomore year. Whoo! Party girl. Can you say party girl? Cause that's, I think that I might have like, party girl was here and I was like right here. Like, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> freshman year, let's talk about it. Um, I roomed with my friend from high school. So I knew who my roommate was. Um, she was like on the, the pre-med track. So she was like really into the book. She didn't really party with me too much. When I first got there, I was on some, yeah, I'm not gonna party, I'm not gonna drink, I'm not gonna do nothing, like, nah, I'm gonna be good, like, I'm a church girl, I'm not gonna come here and show out, like, nah, that's not for me. So, I remember, like, they had this um, meet and greet on the quad for the, the freshmen, and I peeped all the dudes, like, checking me out, I think I had on a rugby shirt and some leggings, like, I was looking cute, my own hair, like, I had nice here back then so I would wear it out um I mean I still have nice hair but I mean like my hair was straight and permed and like like most girls was wearing weeds and stuff and I was wearing my own hair so I feel like all of those things kind of like put me on this kind of like I'm different and so yeah guys just started coming out the woodwork and I saw them that night just watching me and I'm just like oh lord Jesus so there were some guys that lived in my building um we kind of like me and my friends kind of hung out with him and his friends and we went to this um this like party in the tower in somebody's room this is like very very beginning and i remember this dude being there but like it was very vague because i had not like in high school i didn't drink I didn't smoke, I didn't do anything. Like I was a, like a really good kid in high school. Like some of the stuff that these kids be doing in high school, I didn't do it until like freshman, so sophomore year of, of college. So everything was new to me. Um, I remember, <laughs> I don't know, it was something light, some kind of light liquor um, that, that I had that night. And I just was like, this is the first time I drank anything and I didn't know how to act. <laughs> And apparently I was doing the most, but I don't think it was like, cause eventually I was partying and I kind of got like a hold of like a hang of how to drink and like how to feel and like how it made me feel kind of thing. But this is the first night. So I was just like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But apparently the dude that I ended up with in high school, I mean in college was there and he saw like all of this happening and like it went from um it wasn't anything crazy i was just like acting silly so i'm already silly by myself like sober so it, i was just like acting really like talkative and silly and saying dumb stuff and um i remember him like recanting that night to me later on and i was just like nah that didn't happen like i didn't say that like no um but i didn't know him at the, the time so 
that night was like I guess our first encounter but I was unaware that that was our first encounter the first time I remember seeing him was in nutrition so I went to a really big school so they had LC's the lecture centers and like it was like hundreds of students in one room with the teacher up there like doing a powerpoint we had clickers and stuff that was how we participated or whatever and i remember seeing him walk down like i was sitting on the left side of the lecture center and i remember seeing him walk down the right side all the way to the front and i was like oh who, who was that i remember like thinking to myself like if, where is this dude coming in late, walking to the front? Like, who does he think he is? But I was watching. I was watching him walk over to the front. <laughs> so, um, I don't. I don't think that that day we talked. Eventually, um, I think one night coming back from a party, my friends were in the cab and we shared a cab together. And that was like the first time I remember talking to him. And then my friend group started hanging out with his friend group. And um, he and I were like watching him. We were all watching the movie, but him and I were like talking. And we realized that night, this was like real low key, small gathering in somebody's room. Um, after kind of like sharing that taxi, we all kind of was like, oh, y'all cool, let's hang out kind of thing. We started hanging out, and the first time we hung out, we realized how much we had in common. Like we were in my friend's room, and we were watching some movie, and we were talking about like our upbringing and like church, and um, like he was black, I'm black, like just straight black, and I was the knee, and like just black. I don't know how many of y'all are like just black. That's me. My mom was from Brooklyn, my father's from Brooklyn, born in Brooklyn, my parents are from down south, like I'm black. <laughs> I'm just. Um, I don't have any Caribbean or anything like that. Um, maybe like back that back, but we just we just black. So like we vibed off of that. Like we were just vibing. Like oh wow, like this is you're dope. We're you're dope. And so after that whole um, meet, we ended up like leaving there and going to my room, and we were talking a little bit more. And um, that night kind of like started our relationship. And from there it just was like it was so easy to talk to him it was just so easy to kind of like just be myself like from the jump like I didn't have to like be all cute and like like he wasn't the first person that I had talked to on campus um this was maybe like like I started talking to guys early on campus and um I had told him about all the guys that I talked to but I remember what there was only maybe one of the guys that I talked to that I was able to kind of like really talk to and like go deep and have conversations with. Everybody else it was just like, you know how you meet somebody and you gotta, you kind of like fill them out and there's like this awkward kind of like, you try to kind of like force it. That's what it felt like with everybody before him. It was just like, and, but with him from the jump, it was just like, nah, like I just feel comfortable. Like I just feel, like me like I don't have to worry about anything I felt safe I felt like I can just pour out my soul I didn't feel like he was judging me or anything like that like it was just like I could talk to him about anything and so because of that like <laughs> um we just started spending all of our time together and um our friends were hanging out already so yeah here Cody our friends were already friends and so it was just easy it was just it was just fun we had a lot of fun but we were still on college campus and um there were still parties and there were still other guys and there were still other girls and um i think the first year we we stuck it out like we were dating and like hanging out or whatever and it wasn't until january 28th of 2011 so i entered u albany 2010 i met him around maybe like september october ish like i remember like the, i think the cab that we shared was around like halloween ish so we started hanging out around that time and we didn't say i love you until january 28th and so we don't really remember the first time that we like made things official or started like kicking like that night that I was just talking about 
where we like kicked it kicked everything off and like we were like vibing I, we don't really remember what night that was but we do remember the night where we both were just like i'm feeling this feeling i don't know if you're feeling this feeling and we had that conversation it was like i love you i love you too um that was january 28th so that's that was our like beginning for us and that was the date that we recognized as our anniversary um and then so sophomore year a year later i remember we actually did celebrate a year so we stuck it out we might have been off and on um because we were always off and on always i don't even remember how many times we've been off and on but it was just like one of those college like this is this is my ride or die like it doesn't matter like nothing else matters if i need you if you need me like i got you like that was the kind of relationship we had um but we just were not always faithful to each other like it was a reciprocal thing like i wasn't faithful all the time he wasn't faithful all the time and it was toxic sometimes like like toxic like it was bad it was so bad like we were like like it wasn't like we, it was anything physical or anything like that but um yeah it was it wasn't it wasn't like always toxic we just had toxic moments when there was like other people involved or there was liquor involved like it was it wasn't always great but when we were good when we were sober when we were like on a, like a good like the same page when we were both on the same page when we were both like we're in this together it was magical like it was just that kind of you know like it was just like I, I can't I can't not come back to this because this is like this is this is it for me right now like this is where I feel safe like he felt like home for me away from home so it was just like it didn't matter nothing mattered like at the end of the day like this is this was home and everybody knew that like everybody who saw us knew like nah Karima and I'll call him one two eight that that's just it like that, that that's it that's that's it so all of college it didn't matter like that was that was he was it and so um we celebrated a year my sophomore year um sophomore year was crazy like freshman year i kind of was like starting out on the party scene like i said before i, I'm, I know i'm going all over the place but stay with me stay with me because this is just this is how i tell stories i'm telling you how i remember it right so freshman year yeah i was partying but Sophomore year, I was I was partying. <laughs> okay. I didn't I no longer lived with the same girl. Another girl had asked me to be her roommate and we were in a suite. So it was a suite full of party girls, minus one who was like a straight 4.0 student. And she she didn't I think I can count on one hand how many times she partied with us. But we partied all the time. And me, after my first semester, um I was able to make my own schedule so Friday classes never was a thing for me never signed up for Friday classes never signed up for morning classes I one time sophomore year I can't remember if it was spring semester or fall semester I only had class Tuesdays and Thursdays so Monday Wednesday Friday I was off and the weekend I was off so Oh my gosh, the stories, but that's not that's not what this video is about. This video is about my love life, right? So we gonna we gonna just you know bypass those stories, right? Because again, I'm sorry, family. I'm sorry. But anyway, um somehow we kind of like took a break um that summer after sophomore year. That summer I went away to uh work at a camp that my mom worked at for her church and this was a christian camp and this camp pretty much changed like my perspective of what it looked like to be a christian my age like this is the first time that i saw like other christians that were really sold out for god and like still like dope and still like popping like they still was doing all the latest dances they still was like you know regular like they wasn't like like oh God, 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 all the time. Like I, w I came from a church where it was like you couldn't wear, you couldn't wear pants, you couldn't do all of this. Like real religious, you know. So it was very different and very like refreshing to see young people like this because that's not how we were. We weren't able to be as free as they were, and so I was just like, wow, like this is nice. This is nice. <laughs> so that summer, I did two sessions. I did. 
um, I was the counselor for the young kids and I was the counselor for the older kids teen session and that they usually have a theme scripture and their theme theme scripture was Romans 12 and 2 I believe I like briefly talked about this in one of my other videos but Romans 12 and 2 do not be do not be conformed to this world be transformed by the renewing of your mind like that summer literally my mind was renewed and I was transformed especially for teen session because that session and then the the person that was over it like she became like low-key like a big sister and like kind of like took me under her wing wing and i remember her giving me colossians one to read colossians one or colossians three i can't remember it was colossians one of those um and i remember like just like being like wow jesus this is this i can do this i can be popping and still live for you like i don't have to because it was like two different extremes for me in my mind at that time and so being away from him, being away from just all of that and like seeing all of this, it was just like, nah, I gotta go back to school and be different, like I got to. So junior year, we were not together. I was not, with. I had, junior year was the first year I had a random roommate um, and God even worked that out because I was so scared to have a random roommate because I didn't really want to room with anyone that didn't look like me. It, that was a fear for me, but I was just like, God, listen, after this summer, I trust you, whatever's supposed to happen is supposed to happen. And when they gave me my room assignment and I looked at who I was rooming with, it was someone on the track team who didn't look like me. And I'm just like, okay, God, well, whatever this is gonna be is gonna be. Um, but it can't, it happens, it just so happened that she wanted to room with somebody else on the, in the same building, but on the first floor, and she wanted to switch roommates. And the roommate, the person that she switched with was an African girl who was popping, best roommate I've ever had. There was no problems with us. Like we were like, just, we were we were great together. Like we were just great together. Like she was fly. She didn't have to. She didn't really party. She was on the track team, but she would do her hair. She told me how to like do hair and makeup. She was just popping. She was popping. Um, and that was like my best year, especially my best year spiritually. Because I was not, I was not going to any more parties. I was not hanging with the same people. Like, granted, we, st I still hung out with my friends that I lived with every now and then. Like, I remember one time, two of them came and banging on my door, like, "Where you been at? We ain't seen you in that long." And I think at that point, I was fasting, and we went to the dining hall, and I was just drinking water. I was just like, "Yeah, I'm just, I just want to live for God. Like, I just, I just want to." And I remember. Um, that year, one of my friends, she was really depressed and she called to, on me to like pray with her and stuff. Like they saw the difference in me. Um, I think I might have went to maybe five parties that year. Like I did not party at all because I did still want to like enjoy my, my time in college. But that year I was the choreograph choreographer <laughs> for, um, um, what is it called? LD, but ADP. So Angelic Voices of Praise on the campus was one of the like Christian organizations and the year prior, sophomore year, I had joined the dance team but they didn't let us dance um, because I don't even remember why. But this following year, they was like, yeah, I want you to be, that's, I'm not doing this story justice, but long story short, I was the choreographer for the dance team. Um, and so I was really all about you know, making sure I'm doing things to kind of keep me in the right space and in the right around people that also love Jesus. I also joined the church that um, was out there that year. Um, that's a whole nother story. I don't want to get into that. But homeboy, one, two, eight. Um, he and I obviously would see each other on campus and we were already together for two plus years at this point and um, his friend was actually digging my roommate at the time. So there was one night where we all kind of like had this like double date kind of thing and I kind of reverted. I went backwards a little bit and um, that was like, it was not the greatest thing for me because the things that transpired after that kind of just was like, why did I even allow this to even like open this door? Like I really realized like when you are on a, a path, when you are going somewhere and like, like you, like you are making the decision to follow God, you cannot give the enemy any type of foothold because once you let him get that little big toe in, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's, <laughs> it was a wrap. And 
I was just like, yeah, nah, I can't go backwards. And so I was just like, if you want to do this, if we're going to like keep going on this back and forth thing, like this is what I, this is where I am. Like this is where I am with it. And if you don't want that, then I remember having this long conversation with him in the tunnels. Um, and I was just like, listen, I don't like, we can do this. Like I, you know how I feel about you. Like I love you. Like we can make you, you're not somebody who doesn't know Jesus like you can we can do this and I had this conversation with him almost like I was like pleading with him to like let's do this right and it was just like it wasn't because I didn't come out the gate like that it was hard for him to kind of be like no like I don't want to do this because that's not how we started it was real hard for him to to accept that I was trying to like live right and live pure and it was just like it was it was not he didn't he wasn't trying to hear it so we ended up just not like it just didn't work at that point um long story short senior year comes around and um we end up like talking about you know just being in a relationship again and and seeing how we can do this and and for a while it worked um but when you're not equally yoked and you already had the taste of, you know, the, the, the dark side or the 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 forbidden fruit. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it PG. But it was it wasn't it didn't last very long. So like yeah, it started off good and it was like, okay, I'm gonna do this and we gonna we gonna try this, but it didn't work. Um and we ended up not in a godly relationship again. And um but it was a relationship like we like I said it was he was home like we were each other's safe place like we were each other's like we were in love like we were really in love and yeah we were in other stuff too <laughs> there was a lot of lust there as well but um no but and his butt negates everything you say before and we were not doing the right thing all the time so that relationship kind of was just always on on the rocks like it never kind of got its groove and then I ended up graduating first and I went home started my career and we were still in a, still in a relationship and I was coming back and forth on the weekends because I actually still was going to church out there too and I started like becoming the dance theater at that church and I was still very like God I want to do this for you I want to do this for you but um, it didn't, it didn't, uh, it didn't work all the time. <laughs> and so because that, that aspect of our relationship was already introduced, it was hard to kind of like try to remove that. And so it was just a relationship that wasn't really pleasing to God. And, um, when I graduated and I was coming back and forth, I, ended up kind of just like yo like what's what are you gonna do when you graduate are you gonna come back home because I don't want to like keep coming back and forth like what are we gonna do um he eventually stayed in Albany for a while and then came back home and he actually lived really close to where I was working at the time where I still work um and so it was real convenient for us for a while to kind of just like you know kick it after work um and I would stay there overnight sometime. And it was just like, eventually because, and I'll get to this part in my next episode, because I was a teacher and because I kind of was like on this seesaw, like like this gray area. I lived in a gray area for a long time. It was just not working. And I realized that I had to get myself together in order to make any relationship work. Like I can't ask somebody to do something that I can't even stick to myself. So that relationship kind of just was like it was it was not the greatest for a long time and we ended up like always being off and on until at one point I was just like yeah this is just gonna have to be off because we're we're not on the same page um I know we kind of want the same things in life but because of my mistakes because of your mistakes because of the toxic things that we be built on it just wasn't gonna work we had to kind of like dismantle all of that and build again with God as our foundation in order for this to work and if that didn't happen if we if we weren't interested in putting in the work to make that happen then this wasn't gonna work so it didn't work um I'm gonna talk a little bit more about him like in another episode but yeah college was really like me trying to kind of like infiltrate this lifestyle of like living for God but I was 
I was always one foot in and one foot out and I was living in this gray area and although I was sold out for God at like points in my life there would be things that would deter me and help and make me go backwards and so that was what college was it was a lot of back and forth this seesaw thing and um I'm grateful that I was able to know God and still have a relationship with him in the midst of my mess um he doesn't leave us or forsake us and that Lord knows I'm grateful for that because there's been nights where I will wake up and not even know <laughs> how I got home some nights but God like the grace of God because yeah it was it was rough in college I was really trying to figure things out and because I got introduced to alcohol I got introduced to all these different devices and substances that I was just like yeah I, I gotta make sure that I remove these things in order to really get to know God and that's where I am right now which I'll talk about later but like I'm not gonna say like go out in college if you're watching this and you're in college like don't don't necessarily say well she did it she's fine no like if I had somebody guide me and again like my junior year was the best year because I put those things on the back burner and I really decided to put myself around um in situations and in groups and around people that were like-minded and that was my best year in college when I decided to like do things differently and and show God I was serious about him um but I would say just just try to have a relationship with God and understand that you don't you don't you can choose to live for him and he will ha he got you like I feel like because I was in this great area I, I put myself in in this situation where I, I kind of like didn't get to where I could have gotten to because of my indecisiveness because I was lukewarm it took me a longer time to get to this place than if I would have actually made that decision to fully be sold out and to fully live for Christ and if I had the right example to see what that looks like you know like I was the first one to go away to college in my family so nobody really was able to really show me what that looked like as a Christian woman and so I had to find my own way and unfortunately I'm not even gonna say unfortunately fortunately I was able to stay in a relationship with God right and our relationship was rocky but it was a relationship and I'm grateful for him keeping me I'm grateful for him loving me in spite of all of my nonsense so I would just say make sure that you guys have a relationship with christ the same relationship you have with your best friend the same relationship you have with your boyfriend your relationship with, with christ should be even more tight so that in those rocky seasons where you are like great in those great areas and you are not sure you have one foot in one foot out or you like living for the streets <laughs> like whatever the case is just make sure you have a relationship with god so that you don't stray too far away because he he you break his heart every single time you do that every single time you go away from him or you you pull away from him like you break his heart and i was just tired of breaking his heart and i'm tired of breaking his heart and so i'm gonna talk more about that in my last um episode but like Jesus is my boo now. Like, he's my boo. I'm in a relationship with him. That's my boo. <laughs> um, nah, but I'll talk more about what I really mean about that. But, like, for real, get a relationship with God. Don't be out here in these streets because these streets don't got nothing for you at the end of the day. Trust me, I know. <laughs> okay? It's nothing for you in these parties. It's not like there's nothing substantial that's going to come from that. Like, your foundation should be Jesus in any relationship so stay tuned for this next episode where i talk about my teaching and i expand a little bit more about um what i was saying in this episode um thank you guys for rocking out with me because <sighs> y'all don't understand how freeing this feels and i thank you guys for watching and subscribing like thank you thank you stay powered enjoy the rest of your evening your morning whenever you watching this thank you guys love you bye Like this channel is a faith-based channel because only what you do for God is going to last. So I'm not going to be out here trying to be anything that I'm not or not have him be the foundation. So I made a lot of mistakes and I'm human. I'm going to make a lot more mistakes. But my mistakes now are going to be a lot different from my mistakes then because I have a clear mind as to who I serve and who I am and all of those good things. And so... 
thank you guys again for watching i'm gonna shut up and make sure that you know i don't make these too lengthy because y'all know i can ramble but <clears throat> thank you guys for <laughs> thank you guys for watching thank you guys for subscribing thank you guys for following me on this journey y'all are real ones please stay tuned for the next episode tomorrow i got y'all okay love you guys stay powered <laughs>